everybody, welcome back. Guess what? We're reading some of the wonderful myths and legends, folk tales, uh, stories of the Native American tribes. And we this is from um, the Miwok tribe, and the story is titled The Coming of Thunder. Bear's sister-in-law, Deer, had two beautiful fawn daughters. Bear was a horrible, wicked woman. <laughs> And she wanted the fawns for herself. So this is what she did. One day, she invited Deer to accompany her when she went to pick clover. The two fawns remained at home. While resting during the day after having gathered much clover, Bear offered to pick lice from Deer's head. While doing so, she watched her chance. Took Deer unaware and bit her neck so hard that she killed her. Then she devoured her all except a liver. This she placed in the bottom of a basket filled with clover and took it home. She gave the basket of clover to the fawns to eat. When they asked where their mother was, she replied, she will come soon. You know she's always slow and takes her time in coming home. So the fawns ate the clover, but when they reached the bottom of the basket, they discovered the liver. Then they knew their aunt had killed their mother. That's dark. We had better watch out or she will kill us too, they said to one another. They decided to run away and go to their grandfather. So the next day, when Bear was out, they got together all the baskets and awls which belonged to Deer and departed. They left one basket, however, in the house. When Bear returned and found the fawns missing, she hunted their tracks and set out after them. After she had trailed them a short distance, the basket they had left at home whistled. Bear ran back to the house thinking the fawns had returned, but she could not find them and set out again following their tracks. The fawns, meanwhile, had produced on their journey throwing awls and baskets in different directions. These awls and baskets whistled. That's unique. Each time she heard them, Bear thought the fawns were whistling. That's clever. And she left the trail in search of them. And each time that bear was fooled in this manner, she became angrier and angrier. She shouted in her anger, Those girls are making a fool of me. When I capture them, I'll eat them. The owls only whistled in response, and bear ran toward the sound. No one was there. It's interesting how you can trick someone with sound, right? Finally, the fawns far ahead of bear came to the river. On the opposite side, they saw Daddy Longlegs. I like those spiders. They still freak me out, but they're still interesting. They're always in gardens. They asked him to stretch his leg across the river so that they could cross safely, because Bear had killed their mother and they were fleeing from her. He did, and when Bear at last came to the river, Daddy Longleg stretched his leg over again. But just as the wicked aunt of the two fawns walking on his leg reached the middle of the river, Daddy Longlegs gave his leg a sudden twitch and threw her into the water. However, Bear did not drown. She managed to swim to shore, where she again started in pursuit of the fawns. That's interesting, this bear is climbing on a spider leg. But the fawns were far ahead of their aunt and soon reached their grandfather's house. Their grandfather was lizard. They told him of terrible fate which had overtaken their mother. Where is bear? he asked them. She's following us and will soon be here, they replied. Upon hearing this, lizard threw two large white stones into the fire and heated them. When Bear arrived outside Lizard's house, she could not find an entrance. She asked Lizard how she could come in, and he told her that the only entrance was through the smoke hole. She must climb on the roof and enter that way, he said. And when she did, she must close her eyes tightly and open her mouth wide. Bear followed these instructions, for Lizard had told her that the two fawns were in his house. As Bear entered, eyes closed and mouth open, Lizard took the red-hot stones from the fire and thrust them down her throat. Bear rolled from the top of Lizard's house and landed on the ground, dead. <laughs> he took the stones and he chucked it down the throat of the bear. <laughs> you come down the smoke hole, you gotta open your mouth. <laughs> That's crazy. Lizard skinned her and dressed her hide, after which he cut it into two pieces, one large, one small. The larger piece he gave to the older fawn, and the smaller piece to the younger. Then Lizard instructed the girls 
to run about and see what kind of noise was made by bare skin. It's interesting they had so the one these you know the two fawns get to wear the pelt of the one who killed their mother. That's pretty triumphant, right? The girls proceeded to run and the pieces of skin cracked loudly. Lizard watching them laughed and said to himself, The girls are all right. They are thunders. I think I had better send them up to the sky. When the fawns came to Lizard to tell them that they were going to return home, he said, Don't go home. I have a good place for you in the sky. So the girls went to the sky and the lizard could hear them running up there. Their aunt's skin, which they had kept, makes the loud noises that we call thunder. Whenever the fawn girls, thunders as lizards call them, run around in the sky, rain and hail fall. Reported by Edward W. Gifford in 1930. That's unique. So that's their explanation for thunder. A little cute story to tell the kids around a nice campfire. That the sound of the bear's hide makes when they're running. Crack, 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 crack. That's, and then tells them you can live in the sky. There's a note here. The Miwok were master basket makers and had elaborate containers used in gathering and leaching acorns, transporting other food and goods and in many other facets of their daily life. When the fawns fled from their aunt, therefore they would naturally be sure to take with them not just their valuable baskets, but their awls which with they fashioned the coils from which they wove and decorated them. What's interesting is that if somebody ever tells you like, oh, what are you going to do? Are you going to be a basket weaver? Be like, why not? Basket weaving was a necessary skill back in the day before robots were invented, right? I mean, skills become obsolete and then others, they can come back to being relevant again. So it's interesting that, you know, the Miwok tribe, you know, had a special tradition of basket weaving and this was very valued. Notice that the lizard is the uh, relative of the of the fawns the bear is the aunt the daddy long leg spider so you hear a positive story about those spider which is interesting because usually spiders are the villain but this is really cute because daddy long legs ironically they can't really bite you because their mouth is too small and they're kind of easy to kill and they're mostly in your garden and they can catch some pests so they kind of help keep things going that's cute that, you know, the bear was on the leg and then he shakes it and he falls in. <laughs> That's so cute. Yes, the Native Americans, you know, it's interesting how fanatical vegans will sit and sit. They love to worship the Native Americans. The Native Americans, many of them wore pelts, had pelts, used every part of the animal. There's like a cognitive dissonance there. It's like they, they like to have the medicine men and the shamans talk to them. But then if you do anything similar, using the feathers, using the bones for beads, anything like that, they start freaking out. It's really strange. Uh, but yeah, that's a cute story. The coming of thunder. <laughs> and that's cute. But that's also dark if you think about it. When uh, the bear puts the, the clovers are these really cute little flowers, like green little flower thing and leaves, not flowers, leaves. I've seen them. They're really cute. They look really pretty on the forest floor, but as if people don't walk on them. Cows like them a lot. There's some in Petaluma. There's a, a milk company called Clover, uh, which is really interesting. And that's unique that you take those, they're so gentle. If you lay on it, it makes it really soft. So notice how they put the clover, the liver in the bottom and the clovers and the deers eat and they get to the bottom like, oh, it's this is horrible. It's like, the contrast of a very soft clover and then like a bloody liver of their relative. It's like something soft and sweet and then something horrible and awful at the bottom in a basket. It's interesting. And it's a bear, you know, a bear that will definitely eat you uh, up like they're like there's no manana. Very cute story. <laughs>